church uh, consisted of people from the from the nation of Israel, or it had a Jewish foundation, so to speak. So that is what. Uh, so she relates to that the early church uh, being made up of uh, the Jewish people as a as a foundation, because Jesus uh, went only at first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and that he instructed his disciples to do likewise. And it was not until after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that there was anything that constituted too great uh, activity among the Gentiles. <clears throat> so Naomi is a picture of the early church. And when she lost her husband, and, uh, and then her uh, sons uh, died, that's a, uh, she, of course, was uh, widowed. Uh, by this happening, and it pictures the early church losing uh, the benefit of um, the ministry that God had placed over them. The, when the, I told you a while ago that when the apostles passed over the scene, there was a change that came about. So uh, she pictures the early church widowed when the ministry uh, was martyred and taken off of the scene. And then let's remember Paul said in uh, Galatians, he said, Jerusalem, which is uh, above, is free, which is the mother of us all. <clears throat> now, therefore, Elimelech, I'm sorry, Elimelech and uh, his sons picture the early reign ministry. Now, Ruth is a picture of the Gentiles, the Gentile church that accepted uh, the gospel and uh, came into the church. And also, of course, the righteous line or the lineage or the seed that uh, came through the Dark Ages and which God preserved, bringing it on down to this uh, day and to culminate in uh, uh, the church being restored among the Gentiles and uh, the reaping that's to take place among the Gentiles and uh, the remnant of the bride of Christ. When Jesus comes back and catches away the remnant of his bride or what, who else will help to make up that bride it, it will be primarily from among the Gentiles because God has uh, gone among the Gentiles to take out from them a people for his name. And his name shall be great, the scripture says, among the Gentiles from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. <clears throat> so uh, this is why this uh, should be a book that we uh, love very much because of what it pictures. Now, her sister-in-law, Orpha, represents uh, the, um, the Gentile uh, Babylonian uh, seed, or like the degenerate um, vine or degenerate plant of a strange vine unto the Lord. In other words, uh, that, that phrase is used in the Bible, but I'm using it, applying it to uh, this Babylonian seed that has continued uh, in the world. And I could give you a background uh, for that and show you that. In other words, uh, the Lord's people after, uh, after the days of the early church, why in due time they wound up behind Babylon, just like... Uh, uh, the inhabitants of Jerusalem did uh, in the days uh, of Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> the, the temple was uh, destroyed, the city was destroyed. That's a picture of the early church. And the people were carried away into Babylon. There they were prisoners in for uh, 70 long years. Well, that's a picture of what happened after the time of the early church. In due time, the Lord's people that is, those of that righteous line, they wound up behind the walls of mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. <clears throat> and uh, 
in that uh, that became uh, the dominant uh, ruling uh, group uh, among, uh, that is, in Christian circles for such a long uh, a space of time. <clears throat> but uh, um, God preserved a righteous seed through that period. And you'll notice that in reading the first chapter of Matthew. Many people just skip over that and say, well, I, I don't read those things in the Bible. I, that's not interesting to me where it says this man begat that one and another one begat somebody else. And I, they said, I just skip over that and, and uh, just go ahead uh, from there. <clears throat> well, that's not wise to do that because there's things in there that are important also. And if you notice that in the first chapter of Matthew, and especially if you know this type that I was giving you, see the temple being destroyed, in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, that's a picture of the early church being destroyed. That is, with ceasing to exist like it had existed in the days of the apostles. <clears throat> and the people being carried away into Babylon pictures what happens during the Dark Ages. The people uh, coming out of the captivity and going back to Jerusalem and rebuilding the temple is a picture of these last days. Well, this is the time in which the latter house uh, is being built. And uh, when uh, the street and the city is being built again, spiritual Jerusalem, the spiritual house of God, the church of Jesus Christ is coming back uh, into existence, coming back on the scene. <clears throat> and uh, so if you have that type in mind, then when you read the first chapter of Matthew, well, you can see something truly valuable in this because it says... In the, uh, in the, um, let's see, what verse would we read there? It talks about, uh, the, in the tenth verse, it says, And Ezekiel begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiad, and Abiad, and so on. Well, what this means to us is that God preserved a righteous lineage there during the time that they were behind the walls of Babylon. Here was the Babylonian seed propagating and multiplying, but here God preserved this righteous lineage. Well, he did that in the antitype of this. In other words, in what was typified by this during the Dark Ages, well, here was the Babylonian seed propagating and multiplying on a, on a grand scale, but praise God. We ought to praise God that the Lord preserved a righteous lion, a righteous seed. Except God, the Lord God of Sabaoth had saved us a seed, what kind of a shape would the world be in today where we would be like unto Sodom and be made like unto Gomorrah? <clears throat> but God preserved that. So now I, I use that to just help you understand what I was saying to you about Ruth and Orpha. Because Ruth uh, not only pictures the, the Gentiles uh, coming into the church and picturing the, the Gentile church in these last days uh, that, and the people that will make up the, the number that will uh, be privileged to reign with Christ, <clears throat> but... Um, she also pictures that righteous seed through the dark ages, that righteous line, that righteous seed that God preserved. Well, at the same time, here was another woman uh, that's pictured by Orpha right there because she turned back. Remember how Ruth said, uh, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor for, to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Aren't those beautiful words there? Entreat me not to leave thee, she said or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and, my, uh, and thy God my God. And where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Well, that pictures how perfectly... Uh, at one uh, with the early church, or how perfectly the Gentiles were to come into the kingdom and uh, 
uh, help make up and become a part of the Church of Jesus Christ and eventually to constitute the Church of Jesus Christ in this world. <clears throat> and uh, But here Orpha turned back. She talked like she was going to go, but when uh, Naomi talked to her a little further, she turned back and went back to her kinsmen and to her gods, by, it say, by the way it says there. Let me see if we could uh, find that. Where is that uh, statement in the 15th verse? Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy, thy sister-in-law, she said. But Ruth wouldn't do that. So uh, that shows that uh, that has come about uh, um, this uh, idolatry that has existed right in Christendom uh, is pictured by this. The pagan things that came in to uh, be uh, uh, included in Christian religion as time uh, went by. We could go into details there. I could tell you about a lot of things that, uh, that uh, would be the fulfillment of this type. But anyhow, Orpha represents that uh, part of the Gentiles that turned away and didn't uh, continue on and therefore doesn't represent the, uh, the righteous seed. Now, Boaz is a type of Christ that we read about. We, in, we introduced to him in, in the second chapter. Now, Boaz is described there as a mighty man of wealth. Uh, he was uh, the one that was... Uh, to be the heir. And uh, uh, remember how that Jesus said, All power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. That's in the uh, 28th chapter of Matthew, right at the end of the chapter. Well, see, that, that's how that Boaz, as a mighty man of wealth, pictures the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, he was a, a kinsman to... Uh, um, uh, he was of the same family of Elimelech, and so that, that he was his kinsman. And see, the law said that if a man should die and did not have any male offspring, there was nobody to keep his name in the earth, and therefore his brother was to take his wife and... Uh, have uh, children by this uh, dead brother's wife, and then the uh, the children were to keep the name of the dead brother in the earth, and then they were to uh, possess whatever he had, his inheritance in the earth. <clears throat> so this was uh, the justice of the law. This was a just provision in the law to do that, <clears throat> that a man's uh, a generation wouldn't suddenly come to an end because he didn't have any male offspring. <clears throat> so uh, this was uh, Elimelech's uh, a kinsman. And so uh, Ruth, uh, Naomi looked at Ruth and she thought, well, uh, she, needs, uh, uh, she needs something. She needs a home. And so she uh, noticed this, especially after Boaz uh, uh, came into the picture. <clears throat> now... Um, here, uh, Ruth, uh, uh, having uh, met uh, Boaz, and there's beautiful things down through there. I like that we're in the eighth verse, uh, Boaz said to Ruth, that's in the second chapter, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Uh, really, that has a more perfect fulfillment where Gentiles uh, come to a knowledge of the truth and they, they learn about this fellowship with Christ, not only in just the forgiveness of sins and just in the, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they, they learn things out of His Word that puts them uh, uh, closer to Christ and they learn about what it means to be uh, help to make up his body and what, what the body of Christ is, what the church is. So um, when he said, Hearest thou not, he's in effect saying, Now listen, L listen to what I'm going to say to you. 
and uh, don't go to glean in another field, uh, neither go from uh, he here, but uh, uh, stay, abide fast by my maidens. And then if you um, go in and notice this uh, on down, how that uh, she was gleaning. So that's pictured also in the, in the Old Testament. You remember how that they were to, commanded to leave, uh, they were not to uh, glean the corners, but they were to leave the corners for the poor and the stranger. And while well, in one of those places, that, that pictures the Gentiles. The Gentiles were to uh, come in along after a while, and they were to glean following the reapers, and they would get, get what was left there. So here, Boaz, he was a kindly man and uh, showed kindness to her. And so he called for his reapers to leave uh, some things, even on purpose out there, uh, addition, in addition what they could glean, that, that she'd gather something more there. So that's what uh, uh, she did. And then invited her to come over at mealtime and to eat with them. And then she ate uh, everything she wanted and then took what she had left over to her uh, mother-in-law. So now, uh, in the last of that second chapter, uh, well, let me give you the, the other thought here. Uh, he talked about that there was a kinsman that was nearer uh, than what he uh, was, you remember. <clears throat> well, that, uh, that uh, represents uh, the law that uh, was, in, uh, was here before Christ came. And I'll get back to that in just a moment. But I was going to show you this then here in the uh, last of the second chapter. And Ruth the Moabite has said, has said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. That has its application down here in these last days. And that's talking about her staying close by the, the men that make up the ministry of Jesus Christ that God would give this uh, understanding and this truth to and would lead his people on into the fullness of all these uh, things. Stay fast or stay close by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. In other words, until they have harvested my entire crop. <clears throat> and Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not uh, in any other field. That is, lest in any other field you might uh, be harmed. So she kept fast by the maidens uh, of Boaz to glean unto the end of, of barley harvest and of wheat harvest, and uh, dwelt with her mother-in-law. Now, the, um, the barley harvest was the result of the early rain. The wheat harvest, which came several weeks after that, it was the result of the latter rain. Now that pictures uh, the outpouring of God's Spirit in the days of the first century and um, the crop that was harvested from, from that time. And then it also then it pictures uh, another outpouring of God's Spirit in these last days that uh, there's going to be another uh, harvest of souls. That's, that's the uh, latter rain. Now, you notice there about uh, Naomi when uh, she had lost her husband and her sons, and uh, they, uh, they asked her when she returned home, uh, is this Naomi? That's in the end of the first chapter. And she said unto them, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara, because the name Naomi means pleasant. Well, things were really pleasant in that early church, uh, and with all the people uh, when they were all together, and these great men of God were there. As Sister Sackett sang that song, when God's ministers are gathered around the counselor of men, she, that's really about that happening in these last days, but these men gathered together, and it was, a, it was pleasant to the church when everything was like that. But after she had, after these men were 
martyred and taken off of the scene, and the change that came about was such that it uh, caused people to feel like uh, Naomi did, and she said, uh, "Why well, call me not uh, Naomi, but call me Mara, uh, which uh, is bitter, because she said, I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So um, she went out full, that is, the Lord commissioned uh, the disciples to go into all the world and to preach the gospel unto every creature. My, they had their baskets full and everything that the riches of God in their possession and in their midst. So they went out to, into all the world and therefore out to the Gentiles. They went out full in, in obeying the commission of Christ. But uh, she, she said, He hath brought me home empty. That is, they suffered the loss of the power and the glory as it began, as the church began to go into the wilderness. That's, that's the meaning of that thought in the uh, story, that is, as far as what that typifies. Now, Naomi uh, looked at Ruth and she said, uh, uh, Shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Uh, that is, uh, shouldn't I uh, uh, help you to see that you have a home? See, that was a very common thing for marriages to be arranged by somebody else, and so that's what she's talking about. She looks at Boaz, and here's what Ruth is telling her. She knows of Boaz. He's a mighty man of wealth, and she thinks, well, my, this uh, very well could work out. This is uh, this looks like this would be right in the will of God for Ruth to be married uh, uh, to this man. He's a kinsman of hers, and if nothing interferes, why, if he's willing, well, then that would be wonderful. So that's what she's thinking of here, and rightly so. Nothing dishonorable about that. That was right and proper. She was a woman of character. <clears throat> and uh, so um, she said, Now is not Boaz of our kindred, with, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth uh, barley tonight in the threshing floor. That is, uh, he, he's threshing... Uh, uh, the grain there. And so she said, Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, and make not thyself known unto, any man, uh, unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. In other words, you notice that. Or you uh, observe that. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. I will do just what she said, in other words. He did uh, just like uh, she was instructed to do. And uh, she went to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother in law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. Now the idea here is that there is a threshing floor and there is a heap of corn. This exists where Boaz lieth down, and Boaz is at his feet. In other words, it gives us a clue and a key uh, of what to look for in these last days. <clears throat> uh, if you want to, where, want to find uh, where Boaz lieth down and Ruth is at his feet, well, you should look for a threshing floor and a heap of corn. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> because now uh, the threshing floor uh, appears another time in the Scriptures. Do you know that the site on which the Temple of Solomon was built was prior to that a threshing floor? Well, now a threshing floor is where the, the 
the grain is separated uh, from the chaff. <clears throat> and that pictures the, the, the grain, the, the pure grain pictures the truth of God's word. And the chaff then uh, is discarded. It, it serves as a type in another way, but, I'm, uh, but this is one of the types there. And so it's where men of God have come together and they have threshed uh, these uh, things that uh, the, the scriptures and the teachings and the doctrines and the ideas of men in this religious world they have they have uh, threshed that out to uh, to get the truth out of these things <clears throat> and so God has revealed some wonderful truths to his men that were willing to come and spend time at the threshing floor some men are too busy or they're not interested enough or they'll not be patient enough or not suffer enough to do something like that so they don't they don't get what to, they would get otherwise <clears throat> so um, then there's a heap of corn there not only a threshing floor but there's a heap of corn there's a pile of grain and that represents the truth and not just a little uh, uh, little crumb here and there but I mean it uh, it uh, eventually it will be the whole loaf <laughs> that is there. You remember how that uh, this woman uh, said uh, she said dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Well, uh, uh, that, he, she was talking to Jesus right there. He he said it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. She said, "Yea, Lord, but uh, children." Uh, uh, dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And Jesus thought, well, that, that's good. And he said, for this saying, he said, thy daughter is made whole. This woman was a Gentile, see, that he was talking to. <clears throat> so, I mean, when he came, he had, the, he had the whole loaf. He didn't just have a few crumbs to give to people. Well, that's the way it will be where... And Boaz lieth down and, and Ruth is at his feet. And not, not only do you look for a threshing floor, but you look for somebody that has some truth. <clears throat> you look for somebody that's got a pile of truth, uh, a, a pile of grain or uh, where there is a heap of corn. That's what that picture's right there. Praise God. All right. So now if you go ahead and read that, then it says that... Uh, uh, came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid. That is, he was startled and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid. That is, he had something covering his feet. Uh, and so uh, this uh, word to him from her meant... Uh, here, here's the meaning of that. Uh, become my guardian and uh, protector by marrying me. That, that's what that was uh, in her saying this. Uh, uh, become my guardian and protector by marrying me according to the duty uh, of a near kinsman. In other words, according to the law. Would you, would you do this? Uh, that uh, the law calls for to be done. <clears throat> so uh, he said, Blessed be thou, the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than uh, at the beginning. In other words, than Ruth had shown to Naomi, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether, they, whether poor or rich, and now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the uh, city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. That lets us see what, the, what, the, what Ruth has to be, what the church has to be. It's pictured by a virtuous, virtuous woman. That's a, uh, that's a woman that is clean and Upright, and of course, in this case, uh, a virgin a woman, and that's what the that's what the Church of Jesus Christ uh, needs to be, not uh, known by man or the ways of man or 
or not uh, guilty of the uh, the sins of uh, the daughters of the great whore that are called harlots in, in the Bible. She's the mother of harlots. <clears throat> but he went ahead to say, and now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. Howbeit there is a nearer, there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down uh, until the morning. So she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. That is, while it was still dark, and nobody could recognize uh, another person. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came uh, into the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. So uh, she came and reported that, and then uh, showed what he had given her. And then in the fourth chapter, uh, uh, he did like he promised. And he went up uh, to the gate of the city, and he sat down there, and he, he saw this uh, other kinsman that was nearer than him, and he called to him. And uh, he said, uh, come uh, and uh, sit down here. and." Uh, I want to talk to you. And so he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, uh, Naomi, that has come out of the land of the country of Moab, sell the parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, or I, let, I thought to inform you of this, or let you hear about it. Uh, and to say to you, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. And if thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me, that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman could see then that it, there was something more to it. So he said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I uh, mar mine own inheritance. Redeem my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. And I take a red pencil and underline those words. I cannot redeem it, because... What this kinsman that is nearer than Boaz represents is the law. That is the Mosaic law. And these ten men that were witnesses, that represents the Ten Commandments. That's the law and its Ten Commandments. And remember what Paul said in Romans 8, the third chapter. He said what the law could not do. The law couldn't redeem man. If there had been a Law that could have given life, he said one place, verily righteousness should have been by the law. In other words, there was no need for, for Christ to come. If perfection could have been by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, why verily then wasn't there another priest uh, arising after the order of uh, Aaron and not be called after the order of Melchizedek? He said, all right, uh, uh, saying then that... Uh, how does that read that uh, uh, the law, I'm forgetting a statement there that he made uh, in the seventh chapter of Hebrews with re regard to that. Uh, yes, for the priesthood being changed, there is a necessity also a change for the law. So uh, here then... Uh, uh, this pictures the law and its Ten Commandments. And so the verse I was going to give you in Romans 8 was, in the third verse, he said, uh, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So see, that pictures the, 
it's pictured by this kinsman, said so that I cannot redeem it. Man couldn't be redeemed by the law, but here along came Boaz, or uh, our Boaz, which is Christ, and he is our redeemer now uh, under this uh, new covenant. So it's a beautiful thing that is pictured here in this story for us. <clears throat> so now uh, uh, they were married. And uh, after they were married, and here were these blessings that were spoken to them by others upon them. And uh, uh, Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife, and then she bore a son to him. And the women said unto me only, Blessed be the Lord, which uh, hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. <clears throat> and he shall, be, he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, for thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which uh, is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed, which means server or worshiper. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now, Obed the son of Boaz and Ruth is a picture of the ministry that will come to exist from among the Jews because Naomi uh, when it talks about uh, uh, him being a restorer of thy life God is going to restore the Jews into his favor <clears throat> and uh, so Obed is a picture of the Jewish ministry that will come to into existence when God has brought them back into his favor because he's going to bring them into the church. And uh, so uh, he speaks of uh, this being a kinsman of Naomi, a restorer of her life. Uh, that's the Jews coming back into the favor of God and being restored and uh, constituting the church. Actually, they'll make up the church then after that. And that's through the love that Ruth has. See, he talks about, For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee. In other words, in the church would be found a love for the Jews. When the world hates the Jews, and, uh, and that's understandable, uh, because uh, somebody said, Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I can't stand uh, those Jews. And they'd tell about how they did them and how they worked and so on. And they're a cross to me. I've heard people say that. I heard somebody say that not long ago, in fact. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but I, I've said about that, well, look, the reason that you feel that way is the Jews, that, that's the prodigal son in the parable that Jesus uh, spoke. And uh, he went out and wasted all of his substance with riotous living. And uh, he backslid, and that's what happened to the Jewish people. Or they're in a backslidden state. And somebody that knows the Lord and has the Holy Ghost and then gets away from the Lord and goes back out into the world, why, a person like that can get in such a shape they'll be more disgusting than they were before they ever knew the Lord, if they're not careful. Isn't that true? Did you ever meet anybody like that? It'll happen maybe 100% of the time, but uh, it can happen. People get in an awful condition when they get like that. So um, this uh, comes about as a result of the love that Ruth or the Gentile church has for the, uh, for the early church, uh, had for the early church and the Jews. See, the Gentile church, the true church of Jesus Christ, loves what happened in that early church. And they will have a love for the, the Jewish people. If you notice there in that one place then, uh, it talked of how that uh, he uh, measured six measures of barley or six measures of grain uh, to her. And she laid it on her. And uh, so I've put a little 
other thought in connection with that, that uh, these, this is the measure of truth that is given to the body of Christ in the end of this age. And uh, in the time of the, of the sounding of the sixth trumpet, and of course then his young men in that one verse, stay close by my young men, that's the ministry, the true ministry uh, of these last days. All right, I hope you got something out of that.